Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Friday and it is just gone nine o'clock. Um, I woke up with everyone else at seven. Well, the boys were up at about half six, but I woke at seven. Um, I've had two really good nights. So last night I woke up once for a wee in the night, but was asleep from about 11.30, I think it was, which is good for me. And then slept solidly through, like I said, until I needed a wee at whatever time it was. Went straight back to sleep. I've had no aches and pains and woke up when the alarm went off. And the night before that, I slept from about half ten, quarter to eleven. I fell asleep snuggled up against Lee while he was playing one of his Lego games on his handheld thing. And uh, woke up when the alarm went off. So, what was it, half six for a wee just before the alarm? Either way solidly through the whole night and no um no aches and pains so that's so weird so weird i don't know why i put it down to like fatigue emotional fatigue the driving um the funeral that kind of stuff not sure why yesterday i slept so well but it's nice it's very nice so, 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 I'm going to make a cup of tea and think about something for breakfast. I do have my bread to finish, so I might just make myself some marmalade on toast. Make some breakfast. And I've got a big pile of washing to put on. Um, and the bathroom needs doing, but I'll do that when I get back. So, obviously, then I've got to drive into Oxford, do my weekly test, see if I can pick up those tests. Excuse me. See if I can pick up those tests from the test centre for the rest of the family. And I do need to go into home bargains because it's Mother's Day on Sunday. And I need to get something for mum. And we're out of toothpaste. And we're almost out. Well, we're not out of toothpaste. I opened the last one. And we're, we're almost out of shampoo because I've opened the last one. <laughs> And normally I'd have gone into the pound shop and stocked up, and I had, but obviously the stock ups have dwindled dramatically over the last however many months since I did that. So I'm not sure, the toothpaste will not last till the end of lockdown, definitely won't. We've got another, what, three weeks. So yeah, there's no way it's gonna last that long. So yeah, I'm just gonna go in there and just get what is needed as I'm driving past. Yeah, I should have put it on the food shop, shouldn't I? Thing is, I kind of begrudge paying a lot of money when I know I can get it for like a pound in places like Home Bargains or the pound shop. Because I'm tight like that. <laughs> Frugal is the word. Frugal. Anyway, I'm going to make a cup of tea, get some washing on, and Toothless is scratching to come out and have some breakfast. So I'm going to let him out as well. There's a big Amazon box arrived yesterday and uh, I went, ooh, and I moved it to have a look at what the name was on it to see if it was for me going, oh, I don't remember ordering anything big. And Brendan told me to get my hands off of it. It was not for me. And I was like, oh, what have you ordered? And he went, well, it is for you, but you're not having it yet. So it's my Mother's Day present for Sunday. Um, I do know what it is because I said to the boys, I've probably said on here, I heavily hinted several times, that for Mother's Day, <clears throat> which is Sunday, <clears throat> I would really, really like a new table for the bath. So I suspect that's what it is. Because he did say, and you have no idea what that is, Mum. No idea whatsoever. There they are. Toothless is out. He's not come for his breakfast, though. I've put some leaves down here for him, but he's headed for the door. He's not going out there. It's too cold for him, but he's just sunning himself in the window on this very dreary, rainy day. Hmm. So, it's 
nearly 10 o'clock, it's 10 to 10. And I will be heading out at probably quarter past 10, no, no, quarter to 11 probably to get to where I need to be in Oxford for half 11. To be honest, they don't even check the times, so I could probably rock up early. Um, it's not like you sign in. So if I get there early, I'm just going to try going because they don't check, you know, even that you're booked. They just, you just turn up. So yeah, I'm going to do that. So I'm going to get a bit of Meg Pond, make my eyes pop a bit. One thing I have noticed, and you lot have probably noticed too, is that when I put my makeup on in here and then I go downstairs and film, it always looks like there's a darker patch. And I don't know if it's just the camera or just, well, it probably is just that I'm so bad at putting makeup on. Um, but it looks even when I leave this room and then I go downstairs and it does not look even anymore. So between here and there, something comes on and goes, Bleh! But I suppose that's what happens when you're, you know, not big with the whole makeup thing. It's literally just something to make my eyes pop. Ooh. I want to thank everybody for all the kind messages over the last week, um, especially over the last couple of days when obviously I had the funeral and was traveling up north and stuff. Um, it means a lot, it, it does mean a lot that you guys were thinking of me and I had some lovely messages um, from people who know me a bit better, um, you know, person, private messages and what have you, um, from YouTubers and people who I've kind of made friend friends with, you know, like that I've met. Um, you know, a few of those messaged me. The families that I look after, several of the parents messaged me. Um, so, yeah, it means a lot. It does mean a lot. Um, let's just brush that seat. You know, it should be even. So tell me. Well, you can't even see because I put so little on, but seriously, there's no big blotches, right? When I go downstairs, there will be blotches. It's crazy, crazy. And I find one eye seems to take the makeup more than the other eye. One eye rejects it. Don't you dare put anything on me. And the other one goes, yeah, go for it. I'll have it all. I'm a little bit worried about Kenzie. Um, he's been saying recently, and this is even before he started back at school this week. He's been saying that he doesn't eat before he goes to school. So like when he was going to school before Christmas, he was saying he doesn't eat. Um, which, you know, Kenzie's a stocky guy, so I'm not worried if he doesn't have his breakfast, as long as he's not hungry through lessons. But it's the reason he says he doesn't eat because he gets tummy ache if he eats. And, he, and I said, well, you've been eating breakfast during lockdown and then doing your work, but he goes and lays down after he's eaten. And he said, if he lays down, he's fine. But if he eats and then sits up, he doesn't feel very well. Um... And then this morning he's messaged me and I said, are you nervous? Is it, is it nerves for school? You know, because he does have anxiety. Not, you know, not huge anxiety, but it's the autism, you know, autism comes with a level of anxiety because the world can be so difficult to understand or deal with and the sensory overload you know as you'll have noticed Kenzie is very he's always got his headphones on which I'm sure is to block out a lot of other stuff um but he's a he's a quiet lad you know he's not I mean they have their moments together but as a general rule you you know you don't hear him and he didn't he hardly made a sound as a baby Apart from when he had a bit of colic, I think it was, and he screamed. But he was a quiet baby. He didn't talk, really, until he was... I mean, he did talk, but he didn't talk, talk, or even feel the need to really talk until he was probably two. So, yeah, he's, you know, he's not allowed 
kid. Where was I going with that? He's not allowed kid. Um, yeah, so school can be a bit overwhelming. And, you know, in the past, when he first started at the secondary school, the lower school of the secondary school, not the upper school, which he's in now ready for his exams, um, you know, the first year he really struggled and he wasn't making it through a week. They were calling me because he was, as we worked out, so totally overwhelmed by the stimulation of noise and people and what have you that we'd get to Wednesday, Thursday, they'd call me to pick him up and he would go to his bed and he would either fall asleep or just enclose himself in his bed um, and hide from everybody for the entire evening. And during lockdown, I got my boy back. This That has been the benefit of COVID for us, is that I got Kenzie back and he had a total, almost like detox from the overwhelming stimulation of being at school. Um, and it's actually meant that I think he's in a better place now for being in the upper school and doing exams. He's more confident and he's he's found his voice, he's found his humour. Um, yeah, I just, I feel like it's actually done him a lot of good. A lot of good. Right, now, see, I think that looks okay, but when I go downstairs, it will not look okay. I don't put a lot on, it just makes them pop. Um, so where was I going with this? Where was I going with this? So I said it could be nerves. Sorry, that was long winded, wasn't it? I said it could be nerves, but he said he doesn't feel nervous about going to school. He's not, he's not worried. But he did say this morning, he messaged me this morning and said, I feel ill again. And I had breakfast and I said, what did you eat? And he said, a yogurt. So it's not like it was anything heavy, but he does have a maths test today. And he said, maybe I'm nervous about the maths test. So I'm going to keep an eye on it and if it continues to happen on a daily basis when he gets up for breakfast and then goes to school, we'll maybe go see the doctor or talk to the doctor, maybe. Because at the weekend he'll have his breakfast, go lay down and put his headphones on and relax for half an hour. So I don't know, thoughts people, anybody have this where they eat, sit up and if they don't go and lay down they feel, I would have thought laying down's worse, I would have thought you get like reflux and stuff but anyway I'm going to go get dressed. Eight minutes of waffle, sorry people. There we go. I think I look reasonably respectable. For now, we'll put a bit of moisturiser on my face. Well, my hands have taken all of that. I need to get a bit more. <laughs> Just evaporated into my dry hands. Uh, this is, I've loved this ever since I was quite you know, like teenager. The Body Shop Hemp Stuff. Um, it's just really, it's velvety and smells nice. Um, my sister, Jackie, she uses it as well. And it's body shop. So it's cruelty free. Although I have been hearing it's not as straightforward as that these days with body shop. So I don't know exactly, but there's a link somewhere apparently with a company that does test on animals or something which surprises me because in my teens body shop when it was owned by the original person that set it up she was very very much the one about you know no cruelty to animals and testing on animals um and actually i remember picking up a load of leaflets and bits about vivisection um because i did a I think I did a talk at school on it um, and so I got a lot of my information actually from the body shop on that but I don't think you see much of that info there anymore.
apparently this isn't where I need to get the, uh, the, the tests from. It's a bit further down the road. I've just driven past it on the way up here. So I'm going to go back there and get those and then come back up the road to go to uh, B&M. Um, the guy in there, I sat down, started wiping the table, blew my nose, did my, like, got the routine down to a fine art now. And the guy, go, the guy goes, um, I'm just waiting to talk. <laughs> and I was like, sorry, I've done this so many times. He's like, you know what you're doing. I'll just let you get on with it. <laughs> so that was quite funny. Um, so yes, I'm just going to go and pick those up now hopefully and fingers crossed there'll be no problems and then I can go and get the things I need from B&M. B&M no home bargains. That was a bit of a mission but they were very sweet so I was sent to this other site which turns out it's actually a site for people with symptoms which I hadn't realised. I'd said is there parking and they told me yes at the other site um, but there wasn't so I pulled up on literally outside the gate of this place thankfully there was nobody there or nobody waiting and I was like if a traffic warden comes I've just literally dumped this but because I'm a van I thought maybe I could get away with looking like I was doing a delivery or something so I just put the hazards on locked up and ran in to speak to the people in the like porter cabin and they were saying oh yeah we don't give lateral flow tests out to the public until one o'clock and I was like oh and he was like can you come back after one I was like not really you know I'll just get them sent to me via the post because there is that option but obviously they don't want to do the postal unless you absolutely can't come and get them they were like well I mean you know we're, we're open to late and I said the thing is I said I've come here literally for my test down at the King's Centre for because I'm a childminder I said I don't really want to have to drive back into Oxford again I'm not from Oxford and he was like ah oh, hold on a minute let me speak to my manager so he he uh, said run up to the the next station um and talk to them by the time I got up to the next station um the the guys there were talking on the radio and they're like you've come for lateral flow tests and I was like yeah I said have you been given the heads up and and he was like yeah yeah the manager's just come in so the manager came and he said what ordinarily they would do is um to protect people who are not symptomatic um they would close the site at 12 and then they would clean and reopen it at one o'clock for people to come and collect the lateral flow tests for families that are not symptomatic. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, so this is a site for symptomatic people. And he was like, yes. And I was like, oh, I did not know that. And he said, yes, yeah, so that's why we, we do it that way so that we're not mixing those that don't have symptoms with those that do. But obviously there's nobody else there at that time. And he said, it seems ridiculous to send you away when you've come this far. Um, he said, you know, if you were in the city, that'd be different. He said, but because you're not in the city, he said it just seems silly to send you away and he was like would two boxes be enough and I was like yeah no that'd be great it gives me basically a month's supply um so he said yeah you know take take two boxes now and that'd be great I was like thank you so much that has been a real help and really does save me you know having to drive back or ask them through the post so um I was very very grateful very grateful so I'm going to run in now and get mum something for Mother's Day, get the couple of bits that are on my shopping list. It looks really busy here. I nearly turned around and left because this car park is busier than it was when I came and got the pet food last week. Um, maybe everyone's in Lidl. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to go in. Hopefully it won't be too busy. Get in, get out, get what I need and come out. I shall show you very quickly what I picked up in Home Bargains today. So I got four of these pot noodles because Lee and Kenzie like them as like a Sunday afternoon lunch. Um, it says £1.20 but it wasn't, they were 50p each. I picked up some of these Skinny Whip bars for myself, strawberry flavour. So they're like a chocolatey treat with less calories, 99p a box. Uh, coconut mineral shampoo. I picked this up not because of what it was but basically it was the only one I could find that was cruelty free and that is my preference. Um, so I don't know what it's like. They were one ninety nine each, but there's quite a lot in there. Uh, one seventy five for the um, juicy mango original sauce. Um, I would have picked up the minty one, but we've got a few minty ones. And the reason I wanted a different shower gel is because it's a bit chilly at the moment, and when you put the mint one on, you get colder. Um, four of the Dove Invisible Dries, uh, one twenty nine each. I fancied some chocolate. And so I got, because you can't quite beat Easter egg chocolate, Cadbury's Easter egg chocolate. So I got each of us an early Easter egg. Um, chocolate buttons, 99p each. And some lemon bakewells, which I know I've got gluten in and therefore I'm being very naughty, but yum. £1.49 for a box of six. 
some Ritz crackers for Kenzie's lunchbox. In, these are like individual six individual packs, 99p. These are for my mum. They were 1.99 for Mother's Day. I got her two bags. Uh, 1.99 for the Sensitive Pro Relief uh, toothpaste, and I got two of those. They were 49p each for the Trio Bounty Bars. I'm pretty certain my mum's bounty likes bounty. It's something I remember from my childhood. So I got some of those as well, and I'll order her some flowers. Uh, 49p for some new hairbands because every time I go to put a hairband on they snap now because they're so old. I got these glitter mosaic pictures for the children to do over the Easter holidays while I'm open and they were 79p a pack. Uh, is it, it might just be one picture, I'm not sure if it's one picture or if you get more than one picture. Uh, one printed car card for mosaic sheets. Okay, so there's four in each pack. For 79p, so that's good value, it'll keep them occupied. I actually thought this was a tablecloth, but it's not, it's tissue paper. 59p for 10 sheets of Easter tissue paper. I should read packets. Um, some Easter sun catchers to paint. I got two packs of those, they were 99p each, again for the kids. And I thought I'd put some rabbit bunting up in the playroom, that was 59p. All from Home Bargains. Kenzie Bears, come home. Mm -hmm. Me, the oh, you got your COVID tests. Thank you. I shall put them with the pile of COVID tests. Getting quite a little stack going on there now. How was your day? Good. How was your maths test? Boring. How's your tummy? Good. Good. How long did it take for your tummy to settle? Uh, two lessons. Two lessons. That's quite a long time. No. I've done a puzzle. It is a puzzle with all... Uh, Different puzzles on it, because it's a puzzle shop. A puzzle of puzzles. How about that? A puzzle of puzzles. It's now half past eight, and I haven't even finished this vlog. I was going to just finish this puzzle and then finish the vlog. But then my dad rang me, and we've literally spent an hour and a half on the phone, which was really lovely. Um, but it was just talking about how the funeral had gone and what have you. And um, I sent them a link to the funeral it was filmed for people obviously who wanted to be there but couldn't because of the limited number of people that are allowed at funerals at the moment so I um, sent them the link and they watched that and then they rang me and were asking about different people who were there and what have you um, and I'd already started having a really long conversation with my dad about stuff and then my mum was in the background going you are going to just share this with me later aren't you I said you should have just put her on speakerphone so um I had to go through most of it again with my mum on speakerphone. Um, but yeah, it was nice. We we're just talking about family history and what have you. Um, you know, stories that I'd heard and things that maybe we didn't understand before. And then through talking with them and talk, you know, sort of different viewpoints of a family situation or things that happened in the over the years. Um, and then putting things together and kind of going, oh, right, OK, I didn't realise that. So it was really, really nice. It was really nice to just have that time with mum and dad chit chatting um and then it's mother's day on sunday so i'm going to take mum some bits over um in the next well the next day or two either tomorrow or the day after we'll see anyway i think this vlog is quite long enough so i will see you all tomorrow thank you very much for watching